Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be talking about the reserve list. Now my perspective, so before we begin, I have to tell you what my collection actually is or what it used to be. And it's different from the trade binders you always see because th those are trade binders. They don't, they don't have my EDH or legacy decks in them. My collection used to be a lot larger. I sold a ton of it to Strike Zone Online. When I mean a ton of it, I mean dual lands. They're very fair. Like they do very good prices on dual lands and things of that nature. Force of Wills, I used to have. Uh, that's not a reserve list topic, but it's a legacy topic. Um, but the dual lands and some of the other cards like Moat, I used to have a page nine Moats, and that does not that did not include the Moats that were in my random EDH decks. At one time, I had over twenty EDH decks, and they had dual lands in all of them. So I benefited greatly from this reserve list. And if you watch the O channel, you will know that I actually loved the reserve list back then. I can now see that it would be very harmful for new players, returning players, that it is very harmful for Legacy, Vintage. Vintage is essentially dead. People will argue, no, no, Vintage is not dead. And I will say, okay, play me in Vintage. Right? <laughs> or show me your Vintage deck, because how big is that community? It cannot be that big because the most powerful cards are on the reserve list. The same with Legacy. But unlike Vintage, where Vintage is a very good example of what happens when you have a reserve list. Uh, vintage reserve list is the Moxes and Power 9. So what happens is you have a limited amount of players who can play Vintage. Not due to, even not even considering price, uh, how much money those decks cost, which are tremendous barrier, all of that stuff. You only have X amount of Lotuses. And every single day, I see a new Lotus and a uh, what's it, a BC collector plate, so then cannot be played, and all that type of stuff. Every single day, you see a Lotus being slabbed up and removed from being in a deck and sold somewhere into a collection, put in a safe or any of that type of stuff. So it's a very good case example. Vintage is a prime example of what is going to happen to Legacy soon. But Legacy has the advantage that the dual lands were not printed in such a tiny quantity. Uh, the dual lands were limited in scope, but as Magic's player base grows, I believe they are saying it's 18 million players, how many of those players can play Legacy at one time? And the answer is X amount. Now, I don't know what X amount actually is because cards, again, even the, the problem I see right now is the reserve list is making people think more about money than playability. The reason I know this is if you go on eBay and you see like all these dual lands in these cases not meant to be played. This is the prime, this is the number one reason the reserve list should go. Why would you want a game where you need these cards and people are not taking these cards away from the and damaging what I, I suppose it's damaging the game itself, the legacy game itself, by limiting the amount of players who can play, because players are not going to, if you buy that slab, you're not going to take it out of the slab. You could if you wanted to, but you're paying extra for that grading or whatever. So now that people are grading magic cards, they're grading dual lands, it used to be they only graded power nine, and that made sense to me, because there was far fewer of them, and they were actually much less played. But now they're grading dual lands. And this is a huge, huge problem. This is a trend that is going this way and more and more of these dual lands are in these cases right now, especially oh, I, I, Alpha Beta, I don't have that much of an issue with, but when people are grading like Revise, there's plenty of Revise. There's supposedly plenty of Revise dual lands out there, but people are grading it and now people cannot, you cannot play with a graded card I mean, it just unless all 60 of your cards are graded, I don't know how you would shuffle that. But that is the trend. That is what the reserve list has done. The reserve list cares very little about helping Magic players. It cares very little about helping them play the game of Magic. It cares more about providing collectors with money. And how I can know this is when you look at the 
and we look at grading. I don't know the exact data. If someone can pull the data and share it in a link below, that would be fantastic. But I have seen, personally seen, so many of these revised dual lands being graded and being taken away from the playing pool. And the only reason that is the case is the reserve list has made these cards so expensive that they, are, they have turned them from being playable to being collectible only collectible and as that trend goes from you know no cards being graded to 50% being graded you're limiting the you make you're destroying the reason that the card is so awesome to begin with is when it goes in the EDH when you're playing legacy it's fun it's a good card to have it's an iconic magic card and now we can look at it from like a grading slab right I mean it's I hate the fact that cards like that are being graded. I get Moxes, I get Lotuses, I get why you need to grade them. But like a Revised Underground Sea, or like a Tropical Island, I see more and more of these cards and it's just mind boggling to me. Or a Moat, or any card over $200, $300 is being graded right now. It just makes me very, very sad. And the reason that is a reserve list. The reserve list makes it so these cards get so expensive that people are grading them. And secondly, it doesn't provide new ones. So it would be okay. I would be totally fine if you wanted to grade your revised dual lands and we got new ones and we could play with the new ones. I would be completely fine with that. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is people keep grading these cards and no new ones happen. And then the cards get more expensive and people grade even more of them. And it's... This cannot be how Legacy is supposed to be, right? This cannot be the end of Legacy. And that was the end of Vintage. That was absolutely the end of Vintage. When you have a very limited amount of Black Lotuses, and then let's say, I don't know his exact amount, 50% of that very little, very limited amount is in these, you know, in a safe somewhere or is not be seeing play, you have an even smaller amount of <laughs> Vintage players. That's a problem. That's a huge problem. Uh, Ventus is a perfect example of what's going to happen to Legacy. It's already happened. Uh, that's why we have Modern. Modern is supposed to replace Legacy. And before people say that Modern is not going to replace Legacy, it's already ha it already has. From Star City Games, from GPs, from Wizard of the Coast perspective. And the reason it's doing so well is because it can reprint every single card in Modern. And you don't worry about that. In Legacy, the reserve list will kill it. It will kill it. And I've just outlined the exact, the exact avenue it could kill it. Is this the only reason Legacy could die? No, I don't know. Counterfeits might be another reason. There's a lot of other factors. But this is one avenue. People grading their Legacy cards for money and turning it from a collectible card game to just a collectible. I, I cannot support um, grading a revised Underground Sea. I just don't support that at all because that's a card that once you grade those, there's less. I mean, every year I'm assuming there's some that's damaged, lost from a collection. Maybe somebody's mom throws out a legacy collect. So every single year, they are just destroyed anyway. And now you have people actively trying to make money by, and then by limiting their availability, it's, it's a bad scenario. It's very, very bad. Bye, guys.